There are many ways to get started in configuring Netbox. I'm here to show you which way is best. So I'm gonna call this little series of videos that are coming up here, the Netbox structure, assembling the Lego pieces, because you'll find that that Netbox truly is a, a series of Lego pieces that all fit together, and there is a right order to, to, to start configuring them. Now, it's a little bit of chicken and egg. You're gonna feel that way when you get started, and, and most people do this. They'll get Netbox installed, the web interface is up, and they're like, oh, great! And they, they jump into exactly what they came to Netbox for, which is the IP address management devices, you know, inventory tracking, all that. And as they're doing that, there will be these required fields and they're like, ah, uh, I got to do that. So you'll just go configure some random junk for those required fields. And then before long, it's all turned to gobbledygook and you're like, ah, just delete it all and start over, right? So let's not do that. It all starts with the Netbox site. The site is the center. The site is the core of Netbox. And a site, I would say you can use it for many things, but I would say the most traditional way is use it exactly what it sounds like. This is the location that contains the network equipment and the IP address management, the VLANs, the interfaces, all of that kind of stuff that you're using Netbox to track, right? So one of the first things that you should do in configuring Netbox is to set up the site. So before I even talk about some of these other pieces right now, I want to go there with you, right? Um, I'm going to bring Netbox up and I want you to do this with me. And I, and I know you're going to see that you're like, oh, well, I want to do that. No, 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 no. Hang on, hang on. Do, do exactly this with me. Go in Netbox and you're going to see right on the, the upper left. It's, think of it like that's the you know, table of contents. It starts here, top left, click on sites. No sites will exist. Go to the upper right, click on add, and you're going to add in my first site. Now I know right now you're like, no, I, I want to name it like, you know, Denver or like, don't do that. Name it my first site. It's like, hello world. There's a reason all programming starts with hello world is because they know it's just a template, right? So, so you'll notice right underneath it creates a slug. Now that's, it's going to seem insignificant at first, but as you get deeper into Netbox and start integrating APIs, looking at the database, that becomes pretty significant, right? Um, the status is the only other required field, which you can see in bold right there. It's currently active, but you notice we've got planned, retired, if you if you want to, you know, lock, lock in some of those old sites and, and put it in the archive, right? Um, scroll down and you'll see all the different things that you can add to the site, the address, the email, the tags, you know, comments about that site. These are all fields that are, are going to be searchable, they'll be indexable, and probably most importantly, they'll be API-able. I'm going to make that word. And you're going to hear me say this throughout this whole series. Netbox is a great system in itself, but it's so much better if you can tie it to all the other systems that you have. Create a site in Netbox and poof, it automatically creates a site in your monitoring system and poof, it automatically creates a new site in your ticketing system. Or, or maybe Netbox isn't the starting point. Maybe you've got your ticketing system and you create a new site there, poof, 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 poof. It creates it in all your other systems. That's the power of APIs. More on that to come, right? So we're back at the site. I want you to go down here and click on create and boom, you get the site perspective. This, this is why the site is the ultimate container because over here on the right-hand side, you see the stats. Here's the racks that are assigned. Here's the devices that are assigned, the prefixes that are assigned. And these, these are all the things, right? If you go up here, there's your racks. There's your devices, there's your prefixes right here, right? All of those things show up on a report right here. And even better, even better, I love this, images. Oh, I love images. Don't you love it when you go to a site and you take a picture of your pristine IT room, the MDF, the IDF, where all the equipment is racked, right? And, and you know it'll only stay that way for a week unless you put signs and stuff like we do at my company, but, but, but um, it looks beautiful. Well, that's a great thing to put into Netbox, and then you can build your rack from that image without actually staring at it while you're trying to configure Netbox, right? So, so that's the site. Okay, um, enough, enough with that right now. Um, next thing I want to show you is the region racks Intent. And actually, I, I'm not even going to get into the racks. I want to show you the 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 uh, the region and the tenant, right? Let me start with the tenants. The tenant is your way to subdivide the site. 
right? And, and just, just like it sounds, when you think tenant, think of like, you know, there's your site, it's a shared office space. And you come in, you walk in, you know, the first thing you see is in the lobby, there's a Starbucks because it's an airport or something like that. You know, it's Starbucks, uh, star. And, and then right here is, is maybe a, a dentist office. And right here is, is Sam's uh, spas, right? They're all shared, whether these are floors or different suites in the same building. So you could create a tenant, right? You could say, I've got tenant one, which is going to be Starbucks, and I'm going to assign that to the site. And now you can assign devices, VLANs, IP address to the tenant, right? It's the only other thing that you can assign uh, those things to so that you can now have a site with tenants that have their own individual equipment. Maybe there's a little wall mounted rack foomp, on the wall of Starbucks, right? And all their equipment's right there. That's you, you've got that assigned to the tenant, but, but in that office complex, Maybe they have one router, that's common, one internet connection that all the tenants share. Well, in that case, assign that router to the site and then all the individual devices to the individual tenants. So, so tenant, again, is your way of subdividing that site up. Now, region. Regions are your way of categorizing sites. That's the best way. Think, think of regions as containers for sites. And, and you can use it just as the name implies, a region, you think, okay, this is Phoenix, Arizona. This is, you know, Nebraska. This is the state of Missouri, right? You could do that, and, that, and a lot of people do with that. But regions are just containers. So let me, let me show it to you real quick. Watch this. Right over here. Uh, bring Netbox back up. So I've got my first site, right? So I'm going to go to Oregon. And, oh, okay. So one thing I want to show you, this homepage does not have all the options Netbox has, right? This is just the most common options. If you look at organization, you see there's regions. You won't find regions anywhere on the homepage, right? So you click on regions and right now it's saying the regions are blank. So I'm going to add in, let's add, let's add Arizona, right? That's where I am. Create. Now, as soon as I do that, look at, look at what happened. It says, I'm, I've modified the region Arizona, and all of a sudden, I'm, I'm at sites. What? Wait a sec. I, I thought we created a site. Oh, no, no, no. It took me to the sites assigned to the Arizona region, right? If I go back to my sites, you can see right there, there's my first site. It's not assigned to any region. So if I were to, if I were to click on that, go to edit, and say this is actually in the region Arizona, down, update. Now, when I go to my regions, ta-da! My first site shows up, Arizona, right? So you get that. Okay, okay. Now, regions are very nestable. Okay, so I'm going to click on add. Let's just say I've got Phoenix, right? And the parent is Arizona. Great. Now, no, notice it took me right to the sites for Phoenix. There are none as of yet. But if I look at the regions now, it's like, oh, we got a little nesting going on. Hey, hey. Now, now, this is where it gets a little fun because I could go to the regions and I could divide it even further. Maybe, maybe this Netbox instance is for my global enterprise, right? And, I, and I, I have, you know, in Arizona, I've got the Phoenix region. And in Phoenix, I actually have, let's go to region. I'm going to uh, click on add and we'll make the parent Phoenix. I've got, uh, you know, uh, five offices on 51st Street, right? Create. Boom, again, you can see the nesting goes deeper and deeper. And I, I can keep it, you know, there's, there, let's just, add, just go with it. I know you, I know you got it right now, but I just got to show you, you know, 52nd Street, right, is, is my next region. So, so what I'm doing is I'm laying out a region hierarchy. And what, what I want you to catch right now, I'm going to, I'm going to show you in the next video, maybe, um, some of the, some of the practical, just like, okay, how would I do this? Like, give me some examples. That's, that's the next nugget. For now, I just want you to see that regions, while the name implies like geographical location, and that's fine, they can be used for all kinds of structures that you could build. More on that in the next nugget. For now, you've seen how to set up a site in Netbox, the core container, right? And how to set up regions where you can categorize them. And you know, you haven't set it up yet, but you know that we can use uh, tenants to subdivide this. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to go get started with Netbox. If you've got it installed, which I hope you do, go create the first site that you plan to use. I know we created my first site. You can either rename that one or you can uh, create a brand new site, but create the first site that you plan to use with Netbox and then build the region structure around that site. Now, maybe maybe you, you're small and you only want to use Netbox for your little small office. That's fine. 
but just build the region structure anyway. So you know the feature, and, and I mean, maybe you just say, hey, we're in Arizona, we're in Michigan, wherever you are, we're in Australia, raw it. You know, whatever you wanna do, just create that structure so it's there and you can see it, you can experience it, and now you know how to get started with the first structure. It's that simple.